Hey there, and Hero here, and well, I'm sick. So, I hope you can bear with my voice sounding like someone had their vocal cords replaced with a rock and a stick slapping together. So, you read the title, and well, here we are. The legendary RX 480, AMD's affordable VR for the people. I believe it did that and much more, especially for $200 launched for the 4 gigabyte version, directly challenging the GTX 970 at the time and eventually competing with the GTX 1060, which I have previously made videos on before and you can check them out up there. The RX 480 was the first consumer GPU on the Polaris architecture from AMD, which honestly is still relevant today especially when you can get the RX 580s from 60 to 80 USD on AliExpress or even Newegg. Very competitive with new low-end options from both AMD and Nvidia. Just watch out for power consumption. AMD really dropped something big here, so let's get down to the basics. Just to get the uh, thing in there, it's in this beautiful... Oh, yeah, Launched June 2016, this card was aimed for the mid-range with affordability in mind with an MSRP of around $200 for the 4 gig variant, which is one that we have today. I bought this particular card for my sister during the 2022 GPU pandemic, so it was costly $150 or so at the time. Nowadays, post-pandemic, Pricing you should be able to find these used around 50 or so dollars. The best part about getting either the 4 gig or 8 gig is the only differences between the two is the amount of VRAM. Unlike some other GPU manufacturers who wants to change everything between variants of a card. It has 2304 shading units with a base clock of 1120 megahertz with a boost of 1266 megahertz with a memory clock at 2000 megahertz i'm not sure who i recite the specs to but someone looks for these for power it typically runs with one by six pen power connector with a tdp of 150 watts so it sips some power amg suggests a 450 power supply but i believe a quality psu with at least 400 watts and the right connector should do the job. Anyway, today I have the XFX version of the reference model. I really do like how these look, as they're minimalistic and they look good in almost any system. Like always, we'll be testing this card on 2023's budget bench. MSI Mag B550 Gaming Plus motherboard with a Ryzen 5 5600 with 16 gigs DDR4 RAM at 3200 megahertz. All right, guys, let's get on with the benchmarks.
I, 1440p Fortnite isn't the 16 most people want. But if we add in the magic of Fortnite's TSR, we get a 58 FPS average, which is close enough for me. For Warzone, I don't know how some of the 1440p lows beat the 1080p ones, but overall 1080p is playable at basic with the 480. Now, if you want your game to look better or play better, let's add a little bit of upscaling. I have noticed that the game really likes FSR. I already knew going in for the 1440p results at native resolutions wasn't going to look pretty. So once again, let's say hello to our friend FSR2, which honestly, I can live with this. 1080p medium preset is a nice sweet spot for armored core. 1080p high or even 1440p medium would cause slowdowns in the main menu and that would turn away most people. Also of note, there is a visual glitch on your boost and health gauge where it stays white even when they're lowering. This would throw off most people, but personally, I enjoy the challenge. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like this, but the GP usage was 100% most of the time, and there was an occasional stutter during gameplay, which would turn off most competitive players, but did feel like it happened less the further into the match. Now to note again, when I went for the recordings, I didn't have the stutter issues I just mentioned, so I guess it might have been fixed. I'm too sick to even try to do this again. So, I can proudly say this card is amazing for its price, typically 50 or so dollars. It can open any game and can run almost anything well enough for most people. Drivers at the moment are still being updated. Though don't get your hopes up, because it is still an old card and AMD can't stop supporting it on a whim. Though thank Nimes for modded drivers. But yes, this card can still run with the new kids on the block and will do just fine with the right expectations. I would recommend this card if you're looking for a GPU, though if possible, try to find either an 8GB version or the 580 instead. If you still have this card, in my opinion there isn't any immediate need to upgrade, unless you need more features or power from a GPU. Also it has encoders, unlike a certain modern $200 GPU. Let me know down below if you've ever had this card or plan to get one. I'm Man Hero, something of a virtual YouTuber myself. Like if you like and dislike if you didn't like, or just hate me. Subscribe for more, or if you're just masochistic. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>